Hello, I'm DeathSeeker512, and in today's tutorial, I'll be taking you to go from this, which is pretty simple, it's just got the HTML tag, the doc type, a title, uh, the head tag, the body tag, and we're going to go from this to this. So, this to this. And it's really not that too complicated. Um, I will be referencing whenever I get to to there uh, from here be not not for the stuff inside of it but for the okay now it's still stuff inside of it but not for the uh, for, for the um, what I end up making the variables so file new file what was that? Never mind. <laughs> so, there's one tag we're gonna have to go through today, and this will be the div tag. Okay, and I'm gonna make three of these. Why three, you ask? Well, one of them's gonna be for like the header, then the, the content of the page, and then, well, one of them's gonna be this, one of them's gonna be this, and one of them's gonna be this. So, first things first, in order to have it where it refreshes constantly so that you don't have to actually keep hitting the refresh button, it, it's not too hard. I mean, it's it uses another tag, it's called the meta tag. And so, in this tag, there's no ending tag, it's just like the BR tag. But, inside of here, it requires two attributes. Well, an attribute are like, oh, I said it earlier. Um, oh, let's see here. Like, variables inside inside of a tag that need to be instantiated or have a value to so the first one we're gonna the first attribute we're doing is going to be HTTP dash equivalent or just equiv actually EQIV and equals and then what we want it to do so refresh and then content so like how do we want it to refresh so five meaning every five seconds so now we save that and go over here and refresh this and five seconds after we do that it will automatically refresh like it just did so that's good now say you wanted to uh, redirect people to a different website or to another page in your website you can add a semicolon and then the place uh, you want it to go to so http colon slash slash google for instance so once it refreshes it then takes you to google of course it has to refresh twice because it's a new line of code and then it going to google so let's now you can either do that or you can do a relative link. So for instance, uh, and hit back, wait for it to refresh. And now it would take me to there. Now the only issue is I've got a dot here. And one, two, three, four, five, bam. That takes me to here. Of course, you can also make it zero, but then it would just automatically quickly go there. <laughs> and yeah. But for now, I'm just doing it like this. Now, there are going to be attributes for these div tags that we're going to be going through as well. 
uh, this attribute is going to be the ID of it. And so ID is whenever you're using a CSS file, which CSS stands for cascading style sheets, and like HTML stands for hybrid text markup language. Uh, the ID is unique to this specific tag, whereas a class can be used multiple of times. But because we're only having one header, not 50 headers, I'm going to do ID and then header and then ID equals oh and they have to be in quotation marks because you could also use single quotes like that but uh, use I'm using quota, quotation marks um, you should always do quotation marks unless if you've already got quotation marks otherwise you'd have to do a slash in front of it so inside of here, this is going to be content, and then ID equals footer. Okay, that's simple. So let's start putting stuff into this one. So the paragraph, and then inside the paragraph, I'm just going to have hello. Okay. Okay, so the way how I usually do things is I have like the paragraph tag or the P tag. And then I have, every time I do a line break, I always do like whatever's gonna go in that line and then the break and then go down to the next line. But honestly, well, I do it so that it makes the visuals look better. Like, so you can literally just do this constantly, forever, and ever, and ever. Ever. So now if we go back to here, it's got everything. And then the header tag is still here even though there's nothing inside of it. But see there's nothing inside of this either. But whatever. So now what uh what we're gonna actually be doing is file new and then we're going to save this and I'm going to create a new folder and call it styles and and I'm going to name this file uh, main.css so it's our main CSS file now let's actually give this entire website or web page not it's not really a website, it's just a web page right now. Let's give it a background. So how we can do that is we can either do body, which means every body tag, or we can do HTML body, or which would be any body tag that's inside of the HTML tag. We can also continue to go to like P and then A, which I'll go through what A is later and then there'll be any tag that's inside of the HTML tag that is also inside of the body tag that is inside of the P tag that is an A tag but we just want to modify the body and then add the braces at the end and press enter always add a new line just for whatever and so let's change the background color so how you do that is you type background and then dash color then you add a colon at the end of it and then if you're going to add more stuff you add a semicolon after you say the whatever is here so uh, one way to think about it is 
could be like the colon is like an equal sign if you do any other programming and so now what the color I want to use is is I hate you anyway is 27 across and so this is the hex value of a color that has a hashtag in front of it. I did use, no, oh, I used 17. <laughs> and so what this would make is because the first two is red. Wow, the first two are red. The second two are green. And the last two are blue. And so because these are all the same, it's just going to be either a gradient between white and black. So this is going to be a dark color. So if I save that and refresh this, you'll notice, hey, nothing changed. Now the reason why nothing changed is because we haven't linked to this. So it doesn't know that this exists. So if we go here and add another tag and it's called link and if we hit enter, which is why I really like sublime text, is now it creates this entire thing for us and we don't have to worry about it. So you can link to, so it's, linking relatively to a style sheet that is of the type uh, text, which is then a CSS file. Oh, sorry, a text file of CSS. And then the location of it. So because of where this is currently at in the directory, we would then go to styles slash main dot CSS. So now if we save that and refresh this, it's now dark everywhere. <laughs> All right, so now let's, we're, we're not gonna really be messing with this too much. It's all gonna be purely CSS from here on out. So in order to say, hey, I wanted to change what a class looks like. Well, sorry, not a class, but, well, yeah, a class, because I already said it's something about the class. So if you're changing what a class looks like, you'd put a period and then the class name and then the braces or, you know, the period, class name, uh, tags inside of it, so on. But we don't really want a class. We want a specific ID. And how you do that is the hashtag or pound or whatever you want to call it. And we're going to need the header. We are going to need the content, which would be this, and then this. Uh, don't misspell these. And then footer. Wow. I may have to up on a screw because my the F key isn't going to work really well. Okay. Um, I'll be back in a second. Okay, I lied. It wasn't a screw. It's a piece of plastic. Probably from my hard drive, but I don't know what it's from, actually. It's just cylinder. Wait a minute. However. So... Much better. And then there, the line just for good measure. Anyways. No, oh, I can't see. Yeah. Now, anytime you see me do stuff, I'm probably going to always add a new line at the end uh, just because whenever you cat files, it kind of needs that new line at the end. So, uh, say we want to say the width of something, we'll set the width of something, uh, well, of one of these div tags. That's, that's rather simple. Uh, you can set the width by literally typing width and then the colon and then the width. So you can give it a size as in like 50 pixels, which PX stands for pixels or you can make it 50% of the entire page. 
So from over here to over here, actually, no. So from over here to over here, or from over here to over here. Uh, but with width, I always, I always use a percent. That way, if someone like decides to resize it, uh, they don't have a, they don't have to like do this to see everything. Par se, anyways. Uh, but you you can have it as pixels. Um, but because this is the header, I wanted to go all the way across the top. So I'm going to say it is 100% of the width. And so when we refresh it, nothing changes because we there's nothing inside of the header. But I'm not going to put anything inside the header. I just want to be a specific like dimension. So for the height, and yes, you can uh, at the height you can have it min height and max height as well but for now I'm just going to do the height and it's going to be 50 pixels and now we refresh it uh, hello drop down and now this is like huge space up here but we can't really tell that that is what it is so let's change the background color of the header And this one, I'm going to say it is, yeah, that 2-7. And then, don't forget to add the semicolon, or else this one becomes void. So now you can see it's right here. And is that what I actually did here? Yes, it is. Okay, so now that, now that you see that, hey, yes, we now have a header. But it's not touching the top. Aren't, aren't headers supposed to touch all the way over here and all the way up here? Well, you're right. It it should like this. Didn't mean to do that. But so how you change that is you actually go into HTML body and change the margin. And not margin. That's right. Just margin to zero. So now we save that and it's now touching everywhere from over here to over here. But what's this margin? What does it actually control? Well, if you think about it, and I'm going to use this as an example, the margin would be this box outside of the div saying, hey, there needs to be like nothing in between here. And then so the border is not really part of the div per se but it is the outline of it and then the padding which is just inside the border so margins just outside of it paddings inside of it it says hey there needs to be this much room between the side of the div and the content inside of it and then there's the content inside of the div so, yeah, when we set this to zero in the HTML comma body, it says, hey, the body of the entire thing does not have a margin, so don't worry about that. So then it allows you to have everything touching the outside. Uh, so let's get into the content. Let's change the background color and let's have it as 57 across. It is, that is what I did. Yeah, it's no. What? 87. I'm going to do eight. Oh, wait, that's the border. Um, okay, yeah. Okay, save. Refresh. It's now like this. But what if I don't want this to be touching all the way across? You know, it, it doesn't look good all the way across, right? So let, let's make the width change. Sorry, I'm keeping these in alphabetical order. That way it's easier to read. 
Um, let's change the width. Oh, you know, 80%. And refresh it. You now notice uh, we gotta hide that too. Hate you. Uh, you now notice that it took it off over here. Why didn't put anything over here? I, w I want this to be like centered to p between everything. Well, how you change that is you then do the margin uh, left and set that to auto, and then margin right and set that to auto so now if we save this it's now centered with that still hanging off the side I don't know why it's doing that anyway uh, oh wait I do know why and so I don't really like how much space is on the side maybe if it was half that uh, that'd be okay so let's change that to from 80% of the width to 90 so now if we save that Cool. It's now not quite as much. Now let's let's also make it to where it has a border. So how you do that is border, and then the colon space. Now the first parameter is the size of the border, so I'm going to have it as two pixels. The second parameter is the kind of border. There's like dotted. Uh, and a couple others. I'm going to use solid. That way it makes a solid border around it. And then the last parameter is the color of it. So for this one, I'm just going to do 87, 87, 87. That way it's a light color. So now you can see that, hey, there's this border around it. But what if I don't want the header to be actually touching this? No, no, no. I don't want the header to be touching that. Now do I? So... <coughs> How you change that, again, kind of simple, is you then take content and add the margin above it and below it. So, so margin top, and I'm going to set this to 15 pixels. <sighs> margin dash bottom. And then the bottom also 15 pixels. So now if we refresh the page, there's now some space in between this and this. Now what if I wanted to add a border to the header? Well, but, sorry, yeah, add a border around the header, but I don't want it to actually be over here or over here or over here. I just want it to be on the bottom. Well, that's kind of also rather simple. Uh, you change the border dash bottom and then it's the same thing as the regular border so uh, two pixels solid and then uh, three okay five seven five seven five seven save it Oh, and semicolon. Save it. It's now got just a border on this bottom piece and not all the way around it. And so, yeah. Now, this color is the same as this color, even though this one looks a little bit lighter. That's the same color. All right. So, let, let's do the same thing for the footer, footer as we have done for the header. Okay, except I don't want the bottom of the footer to have that. Because that makes, like, no sense, right? Since everything's going to be in between the header and the footer, right? So let's change it from bottom to top. And now if we refresh that, it changes it from bottom to the top, like that. Okay, that's cool. But... You know, hello is actually touching the side of this, touching the border. It does, that doesn't look good. So let's change it to where the header, the hello or whatever, isn't touching it. So remember when I said the three boxes that you have to like have memorized? Well, this one's going to be padding. 
And so what we're going to have set for the padding is uh, five pixels looks good. So now if we save that, and now you can see that there's some space between the padding and the rest of the div. Okay, but you know, these corners right here, 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 and here look so sharp that you, you can almost poke your eye out on those, right? Well, let, let's let's make those a little bit more dull so that they're, they're less harmful. So how you do that is border dash radius. And then you set it to whatever radius you want. I'm going to set it to 10 pixels. So that way it gives it a nice curve and it doesn't go like completely curvy. So, you know, those are a lot less harmful, right? But, you know, what if I want it bigger? Okay, so now we refresh that. It's got it all the way like this. So it really just depends on what you like. Um, I'm just going to have it as 10 pixels. Because that makes it look like this. Anyways. Oh, wait. Uh, yeah. Maybe, uh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> and get rid of that. That way it's a little bit closer to the top. And so, yeah. Well, the next thing I uh, feel like doing is, well, shadows. You know, that way it doesn't look like everything's on this one plane. It looks like it's on several planes. So, like, there's a shadow up here, for instance. So, it separates this from this. That way it's not just between one color to the next right here. So, how you change that is box shadow. And so the first parameter of the box shadow is the horizontal location of it. The second one is the vertical location of it. The third one is the shading between the two, between, yeah, the div and whatever it is. Well, in this case, it's a div. And then the last one's the actual color of it. So... I'm going to do 10 pixels by 10 pixels by 5 pixels and then this color. And now that you can see there, it has a nice shadow around it. But what if I don't want it on that side per se? Well, you can change it to where there's a minus sign in front of it, which then makes it a negative coordinate system. And so it puts it over on this side. Or if you want it on top, change this one to have a negative sign. So now it's like that. But, you know, I, I don't really want one on the bottom. So I'm just going to change this negative 10 to 0. I'm going to change this to 5. And then this one to seven, because you know I found that those work well. So now when we refresh this, it's a nice, makes it pop out a little bit more. You know, and I like that so much. I'm just going to add it to the header and the footer, and then I'm going to save it and refresh the page. And now. This also looks like it's off of the background, and so does this. But this looks like it's off in the background below what the actual page will be eventually. So to fix that, we are going to need to <coughs> change this to a negative. And then refresh the page. And there. Now it looks like, kind of like buildings where you're standing somewhere over in this 
No, over here. And so there's the shadow over here. And over here. I don't know. Anyways. I think I'm missing. Yeah, I am missing. That's a bit dark, right? It doesn't go so well with the background. So let, let's definitely change that. So how you change the color of the text isn't by using text color. It's actually just by using color. And so the color I'll be using for this text is E7, E7, E7. <clears throat> so now when we refresh this, <clears throat> the color is now close to white color, but it's not exactly white. I, I don't like using like full colors, so I don't like using full black or full white or full red or full blue or full whatever. I don't like using those. But how do, how, how do we go from this to, sorry, sorry, this to this? Because this looks a lot better than what this does right now. know what just happened but whatever uh, there's actually an image here an image here and an image here and actually this image and this image are the same image even though this one looks a little bit lighter than this one for whatever reason and this is also a different image than what this is so let's go and change that so how we're going to do that is open up GIMP. Uh, I'll post a link in the description of where GIMP is. Sorry, where you can get GIMP. And then it's just default installation stuff. Now I'm just going to test to see just how far our text can go. So I'm just putting in super random characters. Minimizing GIMP, saving it, and now as you can see here, it goes over, and then, sorry, and then it keeps going off of the div, and it just keeps going. So how we fix that is, is by, um, word. Wrap, and then colon, and then the break word. So if the word is like way too big, it'll just break the word in half or in that spot where it wraps. And so now if we refresh that, it now doesn't continuously go over in this direction forever. And if we put Alright, yeah, I was messing around. Anyway, this is how it was before. And then if you put a space here, it would automatically put that down the line. So, yeah, there's the useful tip in that. Now, I don't know why it did it automatically over here, but whatever <laughs> anyways so let me just set up GIMP a bit and I'm gonna make file new and that's just gonna be 200 by 200 and then I'm gonna need to grab the colors for this so if I grab you go over to main CSS Go up to board body, then the background color body, copy that, and click this, and then you can change the color here, and OK. And then I can click this, fill that. And so that's the color that we currently have. So what to do in order to make it a little bit more random is filters, noise, HSV noise, boldness, I always set to 1. Value stays at 10, saturation goes up a little bit, and hue stays at 1. 
Um, don't go way too high like this. Just something a little off settling. So now if I zoom in, it's got some change. Actually, I'm going to change that a little bit more. Filters, we show. Now oh, you can also change the hue a bit. Uh, I'm going to have that set to there. That way, it, it'll look like that all the way through. So now I'm going to do file export uh, dot dot dot. And then this is going to be called background. And then I'm going to go to the directory that it was at. And then I'm going to create a new folder. And I'm going to call it images. And then I'm going to export it there. Then press Control Z. That way it makes it that color again without any distortion don't know why oh I know why it's all there. okay anyways now let's do the header which would be this color and so now let's paste that in okay filters and repeat file export and then header and export and export and then control Z and then over here I don't know why it keeps throwing me at the bottom but it does and then the background color for here copy that for here V K paste tools we show filters we show repeat not we show but repeat file export Content, export, export. Then I can close up this and close. And now we have to link to the images. Now, whenever you link the backgrounds to the images or background image, uh, it's relative to the CSS file. So, you know, background image. And then what I'm going to set for here is URL, then the parentheses, and then the URL to it. So in single quotes, dot dot slash images. So it goes to the parent directory of the styles, and then it goes to images, and then background.png. Because that's what I ended up exporting it as. So now if I save that, go over to here, and refresh the page. The background now has all of this nice distortion everywhere. Okay, so now let's uh, do that for the header, the content, and the footer. So it's going to be the same thing for those. Uh, okay. And then URL, and then dot dot slash. Images slash header dot png. Yes. URL new uh, quotes dot dot slash. And refresh it and now everything had I think I may have messed up uh, I'll be back in a second okay so for one reason or another they were the same color anyways Oh, that's a little bit too sharp on that. So, 
I'm just going to grab that, hit control Z, that, filters, repeat, file, export, you're in content, export, replace. And you just kind of got to play around with it and figure out what looks good. So yeah, that's fine, actually. So that's it for today's tutorial. If it helped you at all, please give it a like. If it didn't, give it a dislike. If you want to see more by, be more by me, subscribe. Have a good day or night or whatever time it is. I guess it really just depends on when you're watching this video. Uh, but most importantly, have fun. Thank you, and, well, goodbye.